political connects. Uh, Don't want to commit felonies. Uh, it's too far. No. This is death for all the two moment of. Oh shit! You ended it on the moment of silence, boy. You know, after listening to uh, that track, it just make, makes me realize how much Pusha T and Absol were influenced by his music. Do you feel that? I really feel that. Now, um, we both got the pleasure of going to a Mick Je the first Mick Jenkins concert for Melbourne, Australia, for Australian in general. That is correct. Uh, two days ago. I feel like we should start from you getting there five hours early. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's start. We're going to share our experience of the performance and actually yeah, getting yeah. to meet Mick, Mick Jenkins and have a really great conversation with him. Mm. Um, so we'll start with, I got there at 3 p.m. and the doors open at 8 p.m. Now, the music venue changed from a pretty small uh, venue to a little bit bigger, 800 mm -hmm. people. So probably from like 600 to 800, I'd say. Right. And so I always want to be front row, and Mick Jenkins is one of my favorite artists, and I wanted to make sure. So I got there at 3 p.m. That's, that's kind of the usual time, 12 to 3 p.m. I, I get to these uh, concerts. Mm -hmm. There's usually people there by then. No one there. No one. I text him. <laughs> He gets there an hour later, thankfully, got some company. Still uh, no one there from 3 p.m. First people, first next two people or around... 5.30? Yeah, around 6 p.m. Yeah, 6, 6.30, six yeah. So three hours, Bubkiss. Could have got, could have waited a couple hours. Yo, but at about quarter past four, though. Uh-huh, good. You remember. I do remember. We're just sitting there eating some Subway, and then I look up. I'm like, oh, damn. That's Mick Jenkins. He's literally like opposite, uh, opposite the walkway. He's walking past. No one even knows who the fuck he is. No. Um, and then he walks into the st the store next. Best uh, times. Yeah, the the shoe store or the mm -hmm. or the skater store. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go in and just say what's up to him. And um, I made a shirt for him, so I gave him. I walked in, and I'm, I'm nervous. I'm a little nervous, you know. Mick's just by himself. He's not really with anybody. So I just say, I say what's up, and. Um, I give him the shirt, I explain it to him, and then I, I thank him uh, for all the music. He was very calm, very nonchalant, you know, uh, very laid back, very chill, mm -hmm. right? He explained that he just got off the plane like an hour ago, so it's a long flight from Chicago. So I expect he's, not, you know, pretty tired or whatever he is, um, as he would be after a long plane ride. Um, kind of, he kind of felt like standoffish, like he didn't really want to talk or really, really he just wanted to be by himself and explore the city, which is fine, I respect. Mm -hmm. uh, asked for Frodo, he said not right now. Um, so I just left, and that was that. And then I saw, and then we, he just walked off and uh, went to looking through more stores. And funny enough, you know, he just walked into the venue, into the front door of the venue. Um, <laughs> this would have as been we were about, up. Yeah, this would have been about an hour before. No, it would have been like two hours. Before. Yeah, one and a half, two hours before. He yeah, just yeah, yeah. twice I saw him just walk past <laughs> and just walk in the venue, and I just give him a little head nod. He's like. I was too busy watching the place next door. I was certain that place was a brothel. <laughs> the amount of young women that walked out there and an old man walked out straight afterwards. Nah, man. Yeah, that was a fun little game. That was my game. That was uh, how I kept to entertain. So then we get in and uh, then the the performance starts at 10 p.m. Uh, there's an opener then. So yeah, Barrow. Barrow's the opener. He's Australian. I don't know um, if he's strictly Australian, but I know that he's you know been in Australia a while. He's been doing music for a while. Probably like four, four or five years, I'd say. Hmm. And um, I thought he put on a pretty good show. Yeah, it was cool. He's a uh, very, very mellow, chill hip hop. Yeah, very good vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a few tracks where I fell asleep to, but I thought he kept the crowd pretty, pretty going. He had some uh, good diversity with his stuff too. I think he's doing great for Australian hip hop. A shout out to Barrett, and mm -hmm. then Mick comes on at 10 p.m. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Mick comes on. He kind of just like, kind of like, there's no really like big entrance. There no, really no. Like, he big just saw kind like thing because I this, like, uh, Green time. Slime was his DJ. He he got things going a bit, and then just Mick just sort of like just like just it was sort very of like, abrupt. Sort of like skips on stage. Yeah, it was weird. So like, hey, what up, fam? <laughs> and his favorite thing to do the whole concert would be like drink more <laughs> water. Water. So when we say drink more water, what I'm really saying is seek more truth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. If you hear that, if you feel that, let me hear y'all say. Just like as he says that, he just like walked to the side, and all the time he played a sparse, dynamic yeah. discography. I mean, if I had everything in front of me, my mind would be able to pick everything he played. But I'm pretty sure he played started one. With, uh, he started with a track from The Waters, 
Yeah, he started with jazz. And he did a track from Trees and Truth. Uh-huh. Then he played a track from Mom Waves. I can't remember which one. But then, and then he talked about THC, what it means, yeah. everything. And then he went straight to spread love. And yeah, he played a lot of tracks from Trees and Trues from his older stuff, and you we were you know expecting to not hear P's and Q's no because of how challenging that song Hell is Hell no and he does he's like anyone know the lyrics to this and I'm like damn that's a hard song I know the lyrics to a couple but not that one I said man's too hard and he laughed and just went off <laughs> it is it is a very and hard and he killed it like lyrically I he think did. he his delivery go ahead it's great I just feel like on stage like when he's spitting those bars yeah. you can see him really just wanting to just murder every one of those lines yeah. just get it exactly how it feels intended so that the fans can enjoy it I feel like he's not too much like about getting the fans hyped. It's more about just giving the fans what he feels that what they feel they paid for to get, and also spreading his message as well in a way that he feels the best way to get it across. Yeah, so he'll like do those little interludes where we we'll talk about you know what what these what mm. these themes mean to him. That he's exploring through his albums. I do feel a lot of the crowd too as well were expecting that because some of the crowd were all like really hypey and like sort of they had their own little circle and stuff. Like, I feel yeah. like that. I like that's not what a Mick Jenkins concert is. That may be what a what a Denzel Curry concert is, but like not a not but a. But Mick has concert. some bangers as well, I think. And if he wanted to get the crowd hype, he, he he could. He could. I don't think he has. I guess the Joy Badass song, which he did, and I didn't expect that one as well. Uh, I I think like throw your hands in the air. I think songs like jazz and a lot of things off THC. Martyrs, Martyrs. Yeah, yeah, when he's being really upbeat with his uh, cadence and tempo of mm-hmm. rapping, that's when I think he can lean I'm to gonna that. I'm gonna get all this money. Yeah, money. I'm a fuck guy. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. Shit. I'm a fuck so, so many, many hoes. hoes. I'm a fuck, fuck your bitch. Hey, I oh, see ya. That was hey. dope. Dope. That was my favorite dope. song he did because it's my favorite Mick Jenkins song. Then he go. killed it. And the crowd, I was sitting there going, oh, oh. Such a great experience. So dope. Um, but the concert was the shortest performance I've ever seen. It lasted about 45, 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised at the length of that. And actually, when I was there, another artist was there. Uh, they went over it and people went over there to tell them to finish up because they went over it and I was like what are you talking about like and we won't get into it yet cause when we spoke to Mick afterwards but like hour 20 minutes you'd expect or an hour at least yeah at least an hour um, usually they like to push it but mm-hmm. Mick kind of abruptly ends and we expect an encore he'd come on but then DJ Slime a Green Slime um, he just starts playing music like a, like a club and then Mick came back on for Kendrick Lamar's right no shirt dancer for about three three, seconds no literally three yeah. seconds and then went back off and then went off so we think oh he's, he's gonna come on <coughs> which kind of like he pump faked us he's like oh nope, nope. and then we got a chant going we got a chant going good slime comes back on no Mick yeah it's weird because they just, you just like play the songs and usually when a DJ keeps his laptop there you expect them to do an encore because why would he leave his Man. laptop there and as an art, exactly, and as an artist as well, someone's chanting my name, I don't care about no rules, I want to give those fans what they <laughs> fucking want. But, you know, they still he, they, they still had time, because they were still playing music and using the stage. Exactly. So I think he could have used that time to perform more, but first time in Australia, he didn't, I know he didn't expect. He didn't expect that many people at all. The reception he, he got, fans. which is what he said to us in our conversation as well. So pretty much, you were very disappointed. Well, not very, you were disappointed. You were sitting there just like, man, I expect them all. But then, after watching Mick Jenkins talk to people, he walks up to us. So yeah, he's talking, so he just yeah, walks yeah. out about 10 minutes later. Getting photos. Outside the side door, a group of people just come up, photos, um, talking to him, da 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 And we're, I'm, just, I'm chilling, I'm like, ah, uh, I don't, I don't really feel like because I feel like the last conversation I had with Mick, he wasn't really feeling it. So I was kind of like standing off and like, all right, I'm just gonna let him be. I'll see what happens when he finishes. Maybe, mm. maybe he'll just want to get out of there as quick as possible. Mm. And you were gonna. I was uh, then in, like after all of that, he just locked eyes with you, mm. and he remembered you. Yeah. I think that like when he saw you, then he was in the mindset of I've just got here. I'm in my own space right now. Yeah, he's and then comfortable. When he's, and then when he's just like, he's just done a concert, he's feeling good about himself, yeah. he's like, cool, I'm ready to embrace it. I definitely like, felt completely that Completely different mindsets, Yeah, man. definitely. When he walks over, he's got a big fat blunt just hanging in his ear. 
just walks up and is like, hey guys, like, how you doing? Yeah, like, like I've snap. never ever seen an artist walk up to me. No. I always gonna walk to them. No. He walked to us. Yeah, he did. And because one of the first things he said to me was like, I recognize you, you're in the front row. And obviously recognized me probably from before, mm-hmm. um, which is really cool. You know, I felt like now I'm talking to a person now. Exactly. That man. whole conversation, I didn't feel like he was an artist. I didn't feel like he was up here. Because when they're on this stage, you feel like they're up there. Mm-hmm. What I loved about Janae Oka when I went to a concert, she said, just because I'm on this stage doesn't mean I'm better than you. It doesn't mean we're different. We're, this, we're like, we're the same. And, and that's the impression I got from Mick when we had mm-hmm. a, a really good conversation with him. So... You know, what do you remember from that conversation? Like, the first thing we talked about was... was uh, I think first up, we just sort of went into... Well, I do remember you saying, like, yo, how do you feel about having the best, one of the best albums what? of 2016? Yeah. That's sort of how it started. And he just sort of smiled and went and decided, like, man, I don't really think about it like that. Yeah. I think more about, like... What is... Wow, what did he say? He, he said something along the lines of... He's not really concerned... What impression I got, he wasn't really concerned mm. with the superficialities of of hip-hop anymore, of the accolades. Yeah, yeah, He wasn't concerned about, like, I want to be the best in this regard. No, he was just more concerned about him just getting his message across. Him, right. spread, him spreading that love. Right. And, like, so he wants the views, he wants the people, he wants the fans, but that's in a way that he can spread everything that he's trying to do. He doesn't want the, the titles to be the king. And he said that, like, he did say that, like, yeah. on a good day, Kendrick, he give his money for him. Yeah. He said, I, I, could, I could do that shit, but, like, as right now, I just don't want that. I don't right. want that on me. Th- that's what's so interesting to me because I agree. I think he could. And the next question was, Definitely. do you feel like you're one of the best rappers in the game? Because I feel like he is. Yeah. And, you know, he kind of shrugged that compliment off. <laughs> he smiled and shrugged. Yeah, because it's like, that's not even a game I'm trying to play. Yeah, think like that. And then you asked him a real question of like, did you have to change when you did the music for, this was, you said the, the mental? Or? Yeah, well, like what, because that's a, you have to shift your mental, st- like how did you, sh- I asked him how he shifted his mental state or had that shift that mentality shift from, you know, not caring about that, those things, not caring about this, the, trying to be the top guy in the game. Because mm-hmm. that's quite a shift you have to make. And he described when he was doing his projects earlier, I think uh, maybe around Waters or something, that, you know, he wasn't always like that. Like Yeah, especially with his poetry, which he did beforehand. Yeah, I talked, I, I wrote an Instagram post, a lengthy Instagram post, um, if anybody want, is curious on like, uh, a succinct version of of, our th- of my experience with it, mm. of our conversation. It's there. I'll link it up or whatever. But um, he essentially said when he used to do spoken word poetry, yeah, yeah, yeah. performances, mm-hmm. he would try and impress the crowd. Yeah. Right. What do you also remember? He tried to impress the crowd. He tried to get a reaction. Try to get a reaction. He tried to like make sure that like everything that he did like he just felt like he was getting what he wanted from them right. the way that he felt that they react and then he then over time he just realized it wasn't about that for him uh-huh. it's more about about him right it became, and, yeah. and the bigger picture uh-huh. and the people around him that he cared about 100% and I felt like that's so fascinating you go from from that which is how a lot of hip hop rappers are today mm-hmm. how they become people are fame. a lot of people are obsessed with that Huge amounts of people, man. And people are like, yeah, I'm the best. So like, once you start getting that respect, you start getting some fans, mm-hmm. it's tough to get not caught up in that. You know, we're starting to get some traction now. Mm. Are we going to get caught up in that? Hmm. We will see. We will see. But. And also, because his track listing was so different, I asked him, um, why did yeah, you do that? You way? asked him, really, yeah. Straight up, he was, like that? straight up, he was like, look, I just don't like performing the same shit. Yeah. And I was like, that's great because so many artists out there would cater towards the audience and would keep doing the same shit. And it's easier for them. Easy to remember the lyrics. Easier just in many regards. But he's like, look, just don't like doing the same shit. Doesn't like, doesn't like repetitiveness. And that's... Not a monotonous man. That's great because usually these artists come in with a set list. They perform pretty much the same throughout their whole tour. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on the country they're in. And then you asked the question about, you know, are you going to continue the theme? Yeah, I said, are you going to continue the war theme? And he looked at me and was like, it's not a theme. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, that's it. It's like, it's truth. That's it. Water is truth. So whenever I bring it up in that regard, I'll be bringing up water because it's truth. It's forever. It's forever. It's not, it's not a concept. It's not, yeah. it's just a li- it's just life. It's, mm-hmm. it's it. It's just something he lives by, a principle, a value. Exactly. A moral. And I, I thought that was, he sounds really, he, he sounds like a really grounded person. Like, Definitely. Like he doesn't exude this kind of, exudes a quiet confidence. It's not like this big bravado. It's just a, it's a quiet, subtle confidence. Mm-hmm. He's very sure of the things you've done. 
things he's done and he's able to hold his own through it and and able to tackle our questions. One of the other things I liked is when you mentioned about how it's so different because we're in Australia and he's an American, how the cultures right. are different so much. And he's, he's like, yeah, I fully get that understanding. Like, how you wouldn't get it because you ain't from here. Mm. Mm. He talked about, like, you're from, I'm sorry, you're from Chicago, this is Australia, 10,000 miles away, whatever. Yeah. And he talked about the colloquialisms are different. Like, our slang is different. So different. Um, you're not going to get a lot of the things because I talked about like a lot of the people like we can know the lyrics to his songs but we don't really get the message because I've heard him reference that some at some point previously and you know he kind of elaborated on that yeah. saying you know because we're from quite different places because you don't know me personally like he referenced like people got to know me personally he says know some of this shit I mm. understand that's interesting because that makes it harder to relate to to resonate with the artists when they do that because I, I don't know you personally but I respect that and um, I like that the whole time that he was engaging with us he yeah. actually seemed like genuinely interested as 100%. well like he wasn't trying to get away and then as soon as like he felt like you know he'd, he'd spent a good amount of time he's like alright got his blunt out his ears like I'm gonna go smoke he's like hold, hold, hold up let me get pictures like, alright <laughs> uh, and then one thing I, <laughs> yeah he seemed willing that was good but Outside of that, the conversation is what made it for me. The photo is yeah, just I mean, to represent and help me. And the memories, man. Yeah, to, to help. I put the memory into a picture. Um, I do the same thing. So, I, you know, and then I, because I write a lengthy post, not just for people. I write it for myself. I forget this shit. I, have, I wrote it all here because I forget my shit. So whenever man. you look at that, you can remember the time that that went down. I want to know what, what we talked about, right? Yeah, man. That's the same thing I did with Gold Link on, on my website. But, mm. um, and... To fi- yeah, I asked him, because he posted on Twitter about his whole discography, like all my EPs and mixtapes, can you find them or do you have them all, right? Mm. And I asked him, man, I couldn't find them. Like the first three, four EPs and mixtapes. He's like, nah, man, they're gone. They're all gone, they're all deleted. I'm like, damn, we had like quick little laugh because it's funny because I tried to look for them all and they're gone and he didn't like that music he was putting out there. Yeah, so. He just thought that, like what he was putting out there didn't hold messages in ways that he wanted people to hear from him. So he scrapped it and I agree. If you don't think it's good and you're a changed artist, fuck it. But um, all in all, like a really like if I didn't meet him at the end, I would say it's an average, very average concert. Yeah. But because we got the opportunity to have a conversation, that's a that's a meeting. Gr- we a meet I paid two hundred eighty dollars for a meeting get chance to wrap up. I didn't get one percent of what I got from Mick Jenkins, or, or which he just gave to you for a ticket that was worth fifty dollars. Right. And I'm so thankful for that. Mm. We're, I'm, we're so thankful for that. I'm very thankful, man. Right? Even just afterwards when we went outside and he was just wanting to smoke his blunt, he spent probably another 20 minutes talking to fans, taking photos, signing that guy's record that he held up for 10 minutes, just spreading love. 20 minutes is and then generation. He, you, your time fucking warped. Yeah, your your mind is time warped. I don't know, But man. you're right, yeah. It just felt, well, it, to him it would have felt that way. Yeah. So he just won. And then he just ghosted away once he probably talked to every one of those people. Yeah, he got and I was like, And I was like, thing. man... For you to do that to your fans, in that regard, you could easily just go out the back and like fuck it. Like exactly. I'm not gonna, he doesn't have to do exactly, this. He doesn't man. owe us anything. But it just shows what a great human being he is. Yeah, you you just could. Well, you've elevated yourself again um, as not only a premier artist but a premier motherfucking person, Definitely, human man. being. I feel like now a great role model for music, really, and the world. Mick Jenkins, uh, you a dope ass human being. I don't imagine you'd watch this. Cool if you ever did, but uh, thank mm. you for um, putting on a, a good show and uh, taking the time to have a, a conversation with us. A nice, nice, like ten minutes. Yeah. Thank you, up. bro. Hold up. Oh, give, oh, give him a salute. You know, oh, come, yeah. on, come on, drink more water, man. Can I have any chickens? Whatever he said. <laughs> oh man. Uh, um, I hope you like the shirt. Uh, I don't know if he does. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, Migos. I uh, gotta hit that though. Alright, uh, true.